So, we've got something to talk about in the half pint. Hit us. Uh, no, I said have we. I didn't oh. say I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've been channeling my inner Glenn doing a lot of garden work the, the last week. I've been fighting uh, the the worst kind of roses in my uh, in my book. Uh, it's called Vreas Roser in Swedish. I think it's... Rosa Rose. Rugosa? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Rosa Rugosa. Yeah, there are mo- more thorns than uh, anything else <laughs> when they're alive. <laughs> and I bloody hate them. And uh, cutting them off and digging out the roots, but you don't get all of them. And yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a long, long war. I think, I feel that I'm winning as long as I keep fighting. But a lot of battles and the war is not won by a mile. <laughs> That's the... Um rose that produces the big rose hip or berry if you like um, yeah. and the seeds have firm hairs on them yep. and as kids we used to take those seeds out you put them down someone's back and give the shirt a good rub and they would have an itchy back for the rest of the day <laughs> yeah because kids are mean <laughs> yep <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so yeah i went to the to the tip with the three garbage bags full to the brim of of those <laughs> cuts it cuts to pieces in the garden shredder uh, oh wow yes so i can move them because yeah if you're putting them through the shredder why don't you just put it straight back on the borders or into a compost heap uh is that safe it doesn't doesn't feel like it uh, considering how how well they they spread if they've been through a shredder they're not gonna they're not gonna come back from that Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. I don't put know. It, put it straight in the compost heap or just put it straight back on as a mulch on the I, board. I don't mix want some the salt in there heap. and diesel. And yeah, put that on the borders. Yeah. <laughs> Those thorns come back and to bite you, I feel, if you dig through the compost. So no. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you're supposed to put them in, in sealed bags and put them in a special place at the, the garbage center as well. Oh, wow. Because they're invasive and you can't yeah. put them anywhere. Right. So, yeah. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. The best rose is a dead rose. So, uh... <laughs> I think we've already done this half pipe before, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a recurring theme. <laughs> well, I have... Um, I have not channeled my inner glee. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I have... Uh, so it's glee. <laughs> I'm looking at it every day and like... Oh, it's, I should do that, but now I'm not. I'm not going to do anything the next week, and then the week after that is the last week of holiday. And do I want to spend that doing gardening? So no, it's kind of sad though. It's just I finished my first week, and I'm already dreading going back to work. So it's like, <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, You'd probably be only be at work a couple of days though, won't you, before the next holiday? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah. I mean, it's going to be two grueling days, and then. <laughs> I've forgotten all about work, I feel. Until Haval just reminded you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Haval. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I, I checked my work email this uh, weekend. Yeah. And mo- most of the emails were someone mailed a question and then someone else answered it. Okay, that's done. That's done. I have to do, <laughs> don't have to do that. I, ha- I confirmed that. And yes, I can answer that question. And then I'm done. So that was really nice to... To be connect, uh, disconnect again. Yeah. What happens if there's a problem with the electricity and whatnot in Sweden at the moment because you're all on holiday? Well, the the service personnel are they're not on vacation because they're actually essential. Us <laughs> 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 just sit in an office and decide stuff. We we don't really we're not needed, and you you try not to have any big jobs. Uh, going on at the moment so so is it just you office guys then in yeah most. sweden and norway that are off at the moment everybody else is still at work yeah, yeah. Mo- most people that if they can they get a, a summer substitute instead so a lot of stores and that sort of thing are just uh, teenagers or <laughs> managing and that sort right. of thing <laughs> so yeah jesus <laughs> 
I mean, oh, just did, about sake seems completely foreign to me, but that it would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I guess that's uh, why we, we rate so high on the happiness index. Yeah. Uh, that we, we don't work more than we need to. <laughs> yeah. Barely even that. <laughs> <laughs> And neither one of you seem that happy, to be honest with you. <laughs> no. We don't want to brag too much. <laughs> I actually found a job. Uh, we need, don't need to go into the details that I, oh, I might apply to that one. And then it, uh, of course, was a governmental job, which is a very secure job. And, of course, you get all the holidays. <laughs> uh, and it was like, mm, oh, that's half the pay. So that's... Uh, that's a yeah, too big a cut, problem. but the job sounded really good. But yeah, I mean, I have to cut down on my tool purchases, so there's <laughs> there's a no go there. <laughs> yeah, well, I always thought that when you get to a to that nice kind of enough level of a salary, then you shouldn't get get a salary increase every year, but a work time. Uh, you you reduce your work time every year for the same amount instead. So you actually you aim for zero, but but keep the the same pay instead. Now that's a brilliant idea. I don't want a raise; <laughs> I just want time off. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it only works up to a certain point, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, but that being said, the. When you have a deadline or you just want things to be done before you are going away for the weekend or some, I mean, I think I could have done what I'm doing today on six hours a day instead of eight. Yes. If we just drop the lunch, which I, which I often do anyway, because I just eat at the desk and just to power through the day and leave early, I mean... If you have that incentive, then I think I could. All right, I could uh, skip a couple of cups of coffee, and then if we could just leave two hours earlier. KJ's thinking, "Fuck that! I'm not giving up my two-hour lunch for anybody." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I found the same thing when when we got the kids, and I reduced my my schedule uh, because you're allowed to do that uh, down to I think it's eighty percent. Uh, uh, so I did that because uh, otherwise it was hard to <laughs> to get uh, to get uh, time to do everything, and I found I, I did the same amount of work but on fewer hours, definitely. Do your hours have to go up when your kids are old enough, or do you just stay on that for the rest of your life now? No, I think it's up to there are ten, twelve, or something like uh, that. Okay. It's the limit for it. But then I, I I seriously have to think if I'm gonna reduce my actual time. Permanently, because me me having that um, actually made a colleague of mine think, oh, yeah, you don't have to work all the time. Yeah, I just want to work eighty percent. And I mean, he he's like twenty two or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he does on his day off, but he probably is farting around. But that's a good. But you have also that eighty percent pay, or yes. yeah. But that is, I remember just after I started working, there was a, like a dip in uh, the maritime sector and they offered people to go down to 80%. And of course, I just started working. So like, all right, I, I don't want to do that. But I mean, if someone has offered me that today, I would like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you won't see me on Fridays ever again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Fridays are the good day to be in the office because then you get cake sometimes and everyone is happy that the weekend is coming. You should really yeah, take Mondays or Wednesdays say, off. Monday is the day you want off. <laughs> no, we discussed this already, but yeah, I agree. Monday because you get a long weekend. But then again, if you take Wednesday... You just have to work two days and then you have a day off and then it's just two yeah. days and then you have a weekend. So Wednesday so is best, I think. It should really have been a 60% because then you could take Monday <laughs> off and Wednesday. Then you just yeah. have one day in between and you wouldn't really get much done that. But then you can have home office so then you can at least <laughs> uh, skip on commuting and so on. So, yeah. 
I did go for about a year actually without working in any Tuesdays. I built the workshop in that time, and that was really nice. You know, you get up on the Monday morning, you think, "Oh shit, it's Monday," <laughs> and, and then you're thinking, oh, "That's all right, I'm off tomorrow. That's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can cope with that." <laughs> and then you go back to work on uh, Wednesday, and it's just like working to Wednesday again. Yeah, so it's great. <laughs> Yeah, we just don't want to work, do we? No, I mean, well, I I want to work, but I want to work in my workshop. I mean, the, my day job really cuts into my workshop time, and uh, the thing that annoys me is that I had a long term, well, relatively long. But when we got our first kid, I said to myself, the day she starts school. They have relatively short days. So I want to be in a work situation where I can have a slow start on my day, get her to school, and then whenever she's off, she can come home. And then I'll be here so we don't have to have uh, uh, like uh, a babysitter or uh, like extracurriculum school activities until we're finished at work. And that seems so far ahead. So that that's a good long-term goal, I thought. And then... Now she's beginning school in August, and I'm not there. So of course we we end up in, as probably everyone else is like, all right, we have to combine home office and then uh, like uh, having them spend a couple of hours for, uh, like, I don't know what it's called in English, but it's like uh, they're still at school, but it's not school, but it's like a whole- after school club. Yeah, or a yeah. Whole holding pen, as I would call it, and then, yeah. <laughs> and of course, I wanted to avoid that. Of course, if she enjoys it and she makes a lot of friends and they really enjoy hanging around after school, then then it's fine. But if she's anything like me, like when school is over, you really want to go home because you don't like it very much. Then I would like to be able to be home so she could come home, but I'm I'm not there now, so. Yeah, I think the not liking school thing is more for when you're in in big school, isn't it? It's not so bad when you just start. It's just friends and playing, isn't it? Yeah. That depends, I think, because at the schools, my my kids are going. They really wove those two together. So the after school activities are tied to what they've done in the day, and and those who uh, those teachers also are with them the entire day. So it's. Uh, the the, yeah. the kids don't really see the difference at at, at times. Yeah. I feel, yeah. Because yeah. after school is more fun than they maybe they put put on a movie or that sort of thing. So yeah. it's it's not as bad as it could be. But I mean that depends on what you think of it. I mean if yeah. you hate it, it's it's never going to be good. Yeah, so. at uh, the school we didn't we didn't put her in after school club because we didn't have to. But um, it was just a separate team that ran it completely separately you know in, in before school and after school so and it was just fun activities i don't think there was any any obvious learning anyway for them no so that's the plan hoping for the lottery yeah. <laughs> do you play it? always and they're trying to forget what i learned about statistics because that's a real <laughs> downer when you're playing the lottery <laughs> yeah do you yeah, actually we have play a... it no yeah, we have i mean a, every a... once in a while i yeah. just uh get a ticket but yeah i got i got the family <laughs> lotto uh numbers i mean all of our birth dates combined because we have uh, some overlaps so then it's actually the correct amount of numbers but the spread is terrible so uh, <laughs> yeah so if, if i mean because if you look at the statistics some numbers are are pulled more often than others um, yeah and that's a bit yeah. weird also because if you look at it from a, a like a purely statistical point of view um it's the same likelihood every time and all the combinations are equally have the equal chance of getting pulled and of course a lot of people know that so a lot of people have one two three four five six seven because that's just as likely as any random number and then i remember they uh, in the national lottery they uh, every saturday it's a uh, like a 15 minute uh, television segment where they live pick the numbers and then they do some 
statistics and some uh, like telling people of, about how it works. And they said, well, of course, there is an equal chance of pulling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but 1500 of you have that as a number. So if you win the first prize, you will not be millionaires. You will be very, very disappointed. <laughs> so I think a lot of people <laughs> change the numbers because they, they will then have to share the price with so many. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to keep the dream going. And I mean, as long as it's the, it's, just, it's the government who owns the, the lottery uh, in Sweden. So we just think of it as an extra tax. It's a, it's a fiver a month. It's not that bad. It's the same <laughs> here. And of course, the um, all the earnings um, goes to good causes. Um, and of course, in Norway, you can actually choose the cause where your money will be directed towards. So um, I just picked my homeless uh, dog shelter where we got our dog. And then, of course... At the end of the year, you get an email and say that so much of the money that you've spent have gone to them and they have accumulatively through the year gotten this much money from people. And it's really nice. And it goes to, I mean, a lot of organizations can apply for this, uh, like a grant system, but it's uh, all good cases. So it feels okay to spend like a, a buck or two a week here and there. Are they still a homeless dog once they've gone to that shelter? Homeless? Are they still a homeless dog once they've gone to the shelter? <laughs> well, they're talking about permanent homes, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, if you check into a hotel, but you don't have a house, are you homeless or not? <laughs> <laughs> depends how depends how long term it is, I suppose, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you're a free spirit living the van life. <laughs> that's that's insane. I saw someone listing the prices for actually renting a flat. And he was a student. And he said that, look, the prices have gone up. So a single room flat cost this much. And then it's like, that's almost as much as renting a hotel room. And a lot of the hotels, they have long-term agreements. So we just called up a hotel close to the campus. And like, if I want to la- like rent a room for a year, what price can you give me? And that actually turned out cheaper. So he has a <laughs> hotel room. It gets cleaned every day. He gets towels. They have a, a sauna and a swimming pool and a workout room and everything. And the breakfast <laughs> is included. It's like... And people have started catching Genius. on. So there's a lot of students now who are like occupying like 50% of a lot of hotels close to big <laughs> universities. <laughs> and the hotels are really happy because they're making money because they have now filled up their rooms, which would have been left open at a certain degree. <laughs> it might be a little weird at, at breakfast. <laughs> If a, if a tourist comes there and then like half of it is full with smelly, hungover students. <laughs> well, they're not smelly, are they? They get cleaned up after. It's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> and they can't, surely can't afford the hotel bar. No. No. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> that sounds lovely. Yeah, to be a student, never again. It was fun at that point in life, but yeah. Now I just feel old and I need (laughs) other things. Uh, Time to get alive. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Not that uh, that far gone. Those egg cups aren't going to make themselves cage. (laughs) (laughs) One day, perhaps, one day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you said uh, you had a, a yearning as a kid to make a you did make a bat but you called it a candlestick would you do that now if you had a lady would that be the first project KJ good question I think I'm more interested in making bowls than bats at the moment okay uh, or at least 
service pl serving platters, some uh, wide bowl, not deep, because that sound that looks scary. But yeah. I think I would, yeah, it's more that area of lathing that would be interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. I paused that because I thought you were going to say something, and it was hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What would I want to make on a lathe? Because you want a lathe, just a metal one. Yeah. But I'm thinking I would lathe. I mean, I. Bats, of course, yes. But the only thing I really just think of when people are talking about lathe is either a, a wooden bowl. But those really can't go in the dishwasher. So that that's a no go for me anyway. <laughs> And then it's table legs. But, I mean, even a standard straight tapered leg is a bit boring. But, of course, yeah. I remember in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up, uh, my parents had tables. They have these table legs with these, uh, I don't know what the shapes are called, but it's like a disc and then there is a round ball and then it's like, and then it ends up square at the top. Like a, like a farmhouse table leg. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then it's like, that is one of the, ugliest tables i can imagine is like i don't want it's a there, tool yeah. that makes those in my <laughs> workshop <laughs> it, it feels a bit ex excessive if you just use it to make dowels so yeah, yeah. a metal laid i mean those those features to be able to make threads and that sort of thing that yeah. would be really interesting to actually learn how that works. And what's it called when you make the hatch pattern to no make link. a no uh, link. Yeah, to make a gripper. That's yeah. If I've all for a long time that looks like magic to me that you just put some special things and then it makes a pattern in a <laughs> I did yeah. that when I was sixteen. <laughs> no link. <laughs> Never had to go with the threads though, but you need a um, a power feed, don't you, to do the threads on the metal lathe? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I've I've been looking at the, the lathe that I want to get, and it has the functionality, but of course, it it doesn't have the the separate gearbox for the lead screw, so you can't just yeah. set it. So you have to actually change the the cog wheels at the end, and I can of course I can accept that. But you also have like this um, this feed indicator that tells you when to engage, so that it actually cut the same groove several times. Yeah, and it doesn't have that, and then you have to do it manually, and it's really hard. So they basically they just end up turning it by hand. And of course, I want that functionality and the gearbox, but that is a considerable jump in the price and then how much screws am i basically going to make it's not going to be that many so yeah you can already buy threaded bolts can't you yeah, yeah. so it's going to be a very specialty <laughs> bolt or in my case it's going to be an axle for something so i, I would then I would probably be better off getting the cheaper lathe, having to do it manually, and then spending the extra cash on actually getting like a a pillar router or something to make the key notches in that said axle, because that is probably more useful when you're going to attach uh, something to it. Yeah, my father-in-law has a, a a metal lathe, so if I need to, I could probably use his. So. I'm not going to get one in the near future, I think. That's fair enough. I mean, pla pla you, you have to plan long ahead. I mean, somewhere in the future, that's in an inheritance. So, <laughs> <laughs> Play the long game. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so why should, what should I get my uncle for Christmas this year? Ooh, a course in uh, lathe maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> Long-term investment. <laughs> Play the long game and then he leaves it to somebody else. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Never liked him anyway. <laughs> so I have a John Mason, um, German 
JM Woodcraft at Scotland sent me a um, an Elm Burl a while ago, and there was no way I was going to try and do anything with it on the homemade lathe, but I really don't know what to do with it on the new lathe now either, other than make a bowl with it. That just seems a bit expected. I think I heard wrong because I heard you got an anvil and then like, I don't know what to make of it on the lathe. I mean, that sounds a bit, <laughs> that's a rough carve. It, it sounds interesting. Yeah. I want to watch that video. <laughs> well, I didn't want to do the expected. No, I said Elm Burl, oh. <laughs> which kind of just looks beautiful just as it is, to be fair. It looks a bit like a, a wooden brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you can do you can make that. You can make the rough shape and then you can use your uh, sculpting skills in making the grooves <laughs> and patterns so you can actually make a wooden brain. Well, it, that might be come, come quite handy if yours is damaged after even when you get the results from the scan. I could make you a new one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean it, I, it's... I might even put you could put an Arduino in it to make it somewhat intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot better than the original for sure. <laughs> uh, I will we'll have it as a backup. I got uh, I got the results back yesterday. Uh, I have uh, an eight millimeter cyst like thing, but it's uh, it's benign if that's the right word. So it's yeah. uh, it's totally inactive and it's probably been there for my entire life. And they say it's nothing to worry about, and you don't even have a to have a checkup further down the line because they've done a lot of checks and scans and no. I wouldn't I wouldn't think of it as a cyst, I'd think of it as extra storage. Yeah. <laughs> extra room. <laughs> yeah. Did you get shot in the head with a BB gun when you were a kid or something like that? <laughs> yes. What his parents <laughs> told him about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just keep quiet about this. Yeah. yeah. We just we just told him he was dropped. <laughs> 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 I actually we did have uh in our basement we had uh, a shooting range homemade for an air gun uh because I I got one from my uncle and then of course I came to school one day and I had like a a bit of a scar in in my forehead and like <laughs> people like what did you do I, I was playing around with the air gun and uh Shot, <laughs> shot myself in the head because from ricochet yeah and yeah. because that sounded cooler than what really happened because it's <laughs> it's the one that you have to break to charge and it was yeah. really hard to break it and then it slipped <laughs> out of my hand and i just knocked it in my forehead but <laughs> i couldn't get myself to saying that so i just said oh it's a bullet to ricochet off and i was lucky it didn't hit any eye or something <laughs> I literally shot myself in my in my foot once as a kid with an air rifle or with an air pistol. Yeah, it didn't penetrate my shoe, but it still bloody hurt. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't do it, but I know some guys. I think it was in our street. They uh, one had a leather jacket, so they like they started for like thirty meters away, and I just <laughs> shot him in the back. And like, all right, that's okay. Like, try closer, <laughs> and I tried to figure out what's the distance yeah. of. Uh... Oh yeah, don't remember how close they got, or if there was some parents who actually looked outside and like, what the fuck are they doing? I had a very drunken evening, fishing with friends, probably about I don't know five six years ago, and we're. For carp fishing, you use a bait called a boiler, which is like a 12, 15 mil round ball, which is the bait. Yeah. And they're quite hard. And we all have catapults, obviously, for fishing. So you'd either fire them, fire them at each other. And my mate said, oh, I wonder what it feels like to have one fired, you know, directly at your back from a catapult. I said, I don't know. He said, let's try it. I said, well, you're not firing one at me. He says, no, you fire it at me. You fire it at me. <laughs> So a catapult at full extent at point blank range. We shot him in the back. <laughs> yeah, it, it, apparently it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking, talk, speaking talking of, of an age, 
talking of an age when I'm 44, and he was he was I think nine years older than me, so older than I am now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here I was thinking that those kind of things were were kids' games. I, <laughs> I, I remember we we used to chew off bits of razors and shot each each other with with uh, air, air rifles when I was a kid playing war. Because then right. it, doesn't, it didn't hurt as much as uh, BBs. Razors? Erasers. You chew up oh, a, a small Oh, sorry, bit I thought you said razors. No razors. <laughs> like a razor <laughs> like, what? That, that sounds would be worse. Like, that's <laughs> extremely metal uh, and would be fun. No. Uh, because then you have to you make the piece uh, just big enough. Because if you made it too, too big, the, you clog the pipe. Yeah, and then you were <laughs> you were free game for everyone else to shoot because you couldn't <laughs> shoot back. <laughs> well, speaking about fishing, um, I got a brand new fishing pole at the age of ten, eleven, or something, and of course we wanted instantly to go outside and, and try it to see how far we could fling the lure. And of course, it it had this rubber plastic practice thing that you could put on, and of course. But that wasn't uh, the proper lure. So, of course, when my dad went inside and me and my friend were, were playing around, oh, let's go get the, the proper hook. So put that one on because those were heavier, so you could fling them longer. And I remember taking the fishing pole, stretching it behind me, and like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this into the next neighborhood i was gonna like give it my all and i just yanked it and it stopped before i got around my body and it's like of course i hooked that hook into my friend's thigh <laughs> as, <laughs> as deep as you can get it and of course <laughs> it hurt so he got angry and cried and yelled and he just started running man of course <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't let go of the fishing pole, so I kind of run after him with that, and then of course we had like a, ended up with a hundred meter of line between us. And then of course uh, my father came out, and his parents came out, and it was a big ordeal. And of course uh, I don't remember if he was crying or not, but he <laughs> he was very vocal about the, that not being very fun <laughs> and i was terrified because i was going to get yelled at uh, for sure and then my father said all right but we can poke it out and we cut it off and we pull it out and my friend just freaked out hell no so we, we had to go get him to the emergency <laughs> room for them to give him uh, anesthetics and uh, like uh, pull it out that way and uh, <laughs> yeah so that's been a story for many years <laughs> Hang on a minute. Tell me you weighed him and got a picture with him before you <laughs> before you let him go. Uh, I mean, we didn't even have digital cameras, let alone phones at that time. But yeah, if it happened today, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. When it was in the thigh, I mean, that's the best place to get a hook. Uh, I would say if I were a parent seeing that it wasn't a, a, an emergency emergency i would just probably just have laughed at it because <laughs> i mean it suits you right for not doing what you were told basically yeah that being said i i don't think i mean it was my fishing pole and i think i'm the one who was pushing for putting the proper hook on because i i didn't think he really wanted me to do it and so he was kind of just collateral damage because he was just too close with a kid who was uh, just uh, off the hinges. <laughs> I will call it a learning experience. Yeah, he won't do that again. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe I should send him a message. Do you want to go fishing next time? Like, nope. <laughs> you still got any fishing gear? Hey, well, I do actually. Um, I haven't used it much. Um, so yeah, but uh, I'm I'm planning on during the holidays to bring the kids to the to the KitchenAid Lake uh, just to try to see if they can get any fishing done. But I don't know. If I have there's... a request. All right, come on. In October, if you could take me to the KitchenAid Lake and just let me have a couple of casts, that'd make me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll. It's uh... such a beautiful place. <laughs> if this time. 
Yeah, you should. Uh, you should come a day or two earlier, so you have a real good time to uh, <laughs> yeah. be in the workshop, and then it's Copper Festival, and then they're going to the KitchenAid Lake, and then of course we should also Contain have a, a bond favor. Yeah, the I mean, <laughs> you, you can't go to the lake without having Irish coffee, and then that usually <laughs> tends to lead to a couple of extra hours. So yeah, <laughs> but it sounds like a week. This it's going to be a busy. Two nights, <laughs> barely two nights. <laughs> well, we don't have to book a hotel room if we, if we don't get any sleep done. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, you do the day shift, I do the night shift, and then we need someone to drive. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about shared custody of me with makers as well, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, my father-in-law is a pensioner, so maybe he, he can be a chauffeur on the odd hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably just want to spend the time indoors if it's bloody freezing in, in Oslo in October. It, it might be very nice, but also if it's raining and being relatively cold, then it might not be a very pleasant experience. Yeah, Yeah. It was nice last year, as far as I remember, at least. Yeah, it was raining here. Well, it was kind of <laughs> cold, and I mean, it was a bit Not windy. So cold. no, but it, I, I didn't want to spend hours outside in a t-shirt. I remember that. No, much. no. But there are things like jackets and. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Is October is your pants? No, is your short season over, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I try and get, I try and get all the way through September. In shorts, but um, over the past couple of years, that's been a bit of a struggle, to be honest with you. Yeah, but normally, first of October, full length trousers. I have been having. That's that... when I start looking at the long johns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's. I, I've actually been doing that, putting the long johns under, and then still having shorts. That's a cool look. But uh, yeah, I. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> Well, not if you're a middle-aged man, perhaps. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> happily married, so who, I mean, who am I trying to impress? <laughs> if, you're, if you're a professional runner, then it's not a bad look, I suppose, or a footballer, maybe. If you want to stay married, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, that's your plan. <laughs> if you're just looking at your face, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't really uh, say I have a runner calves, so, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I have to rethink my uh, my wardrobe. That being said, I did actually do Instagram purchase last week. I ordered a shirt. Did you? Yeah, I, I got a lot of ads for this company who sells custom shirts. And I found one that I liked, and all right, I'll give it a go. So I logged on, gave all the input that was needed to the AI, as they call it, and then a couple of days ago, I got the shirt, and the quality and fabric was brilliant, uh, but it was roughly an inch too short in the arms. That doesn't really matter, because I always roll them up anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a bit tight over the shoulders. So it's like, oh, it's a pain in the ass. And I mean, it's uh, it's made to, to measurements, so can I really return it? And then I went to their webpage, and they actually have like a like a fit guarantee for the, the first of everything that you buy in their store. So I just sent them an email and said, it's a bit tight over the shoulders, should be a bit longer here. And I got a, like a redemption code to order a new one. So sweet. Yeah. I'm well, looking forward to that. So I might get a new shirt and then if that works, I'll maybe get another one. I'm like, a, oh. I'm a, like a periodical shopper. So it's like, I've come to that point. I just look at my drawers and I need to go to the stores again this year. And it really bumps me out. But now Crap. I need to go because I need some more t-shirts <laughs> and I need some pants and uh, yeah, trousers. Um, well, we'll all look forward to seeing your new shirt next week, Hovar. <laughs> yeah, and my one we'll call, new shirt. Yeah, and we'll call it tonight for tonight, I think. <laughs> Thanks if you made it this far, folks. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, because we sure we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just me.
Dale. Hanging on by a thread. Sure. So everything's made to measure and everything's on a guarantee for the first order. So uh, you going to see if you can get a condom in your size then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call it a raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> a raincoat for little Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs>